everybody, Matt Raymond is here with us today in the heart of God Church, Singapore. And uh, that's right, let's give him a big hand. <laughs> and all of you know that he's not just a two-time Grammy award-winning artist, but he's also a good friend of ours. And uh, he's flown a long way just to be with us this weekend. So can you really show your appreciation and just <laughs> encourage him? And <laughs> Okay, I have a few questions for you, and yeah. um, you are like the foremost voice of authority on worship in our church, apart That's from sweet. God, of course. <laughs> you may find it funny, but you know, for the last 20 years, your book, The Unquenchable Worshipper, it has been a mandatory read for every single worship team member. And That's it, amazing. Yeah. In fact, they cannot graduate unless they read your book. You may think it's a little cruel. <laughs> but it's necessary cruelty. So, so in light of all that, and this is show you the influence you have in our church. And so in light of that, all right, we just need to ask you this question. What is worship to you? You have to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. You know, what, what I love about worship is it's an eternal activity, you know, and, and I love that, you know, we live in our existence here on the earth. And there's not a lot of things that we do that are eternal. But worship is something that we're doing now and we're going to be doing forever. And so it's actually a pretty epic thing to get involved in, isn't it? You know, and we talked earlier about the throne of God and, and coming before that throne. And, you know, you can look in Revelation chapter 4 and 5. where you look in Isaiah and you get the, the same window into heaven. You see the throne room of God. And actually, just as an aside, before I fully answer the question, I heard a great sermon recently by a guy called Dr. Daryl Johnson. And he says the amazing thing is you look in uh, like Isaiah there and talks about these living creatures and they've got all these wings and with some of their wings, they're covering their eyes and their faces. You know? And then you go forward like 800 and something years later where the book of Revelation was written, yeah. but they're not covering their faces anymore. In fact, it says they're covered with eyes. So it's kind of a bizarre thing, but it's from like totally not being able to see to actually seeing God. And it's like, what, what happened in that time period? Something seismic must have happened, a massive change in that time period. And of course, we know what that was. That was the cross. That was Jesus. Jesus made a way that we can actually come close to God now and we can see him. And it's an amazing thing that something shifted in the heavens. You know, and, and it's, that's an awesome thing. That's what we're going to be doing for all eternity. You know, people think, how are we going to worship for all eternity? Because you're never going to run out of amazing things. There's never going to be a day where Jesus doesn't amaze you. And so, and that's what worship is. It's just our love language. You know, our way of, of responding to him. And I love the different colors and shades of worship. You know, the part of worship is that majestic king of holiness who's higher and more mighty and magnificent than you could ever really fathom and, you, and you're bring, trying to bring him an offering that somehow could be worthy of who he is and at the other side of things worship is you're just a little child going to the father yeah. you're his child and you're going to the father and just saying I love you father Abba father you know which kind of means dear father you know, I love the, all the different kind of aspects of what worship is you can see it in the scripture this in the old testament you've got like these the temple um it's an amazing building so expensive so huge so elaborate all these different materials and elaborate designs and ornate stuff and to, you know measured down to the finest detail but then at that temple in the new testament jesus sees a, a widow and she's putting in two tiny coins which are worth almost nothing in the world's eyes and as she puts them into the temple treasury, Jesus said she's put in more than everyone else because she gave everything she had. But I kind of love so much about that. But one thing I love is here's a God who you can worship him with that huge, ornate, expensive materials, or you could worship him with this tiny, tiny something. And he, and he accepts it all. And that's worship. And I think what you shared about the widow with the two mites, I think it's going to relate to all of you here. 
And uh, Heart of God Church, you are an amazing church. And I know that all of you really give just to build the house of God. And not in terms of just your time and your effort, but you also give to build the house of God financially. And I know that, you know, you guys really, really pour everything you have into it. And, and most of you here, you have always given your best. And like Matt has said, God is accepting it as a worship from you as well. God sees your heart. Amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, God so loves you. <laughs>